Okay, let's have a lesson on this jig from, it's the final movement from the suite uh, BWV 996 in E minor. And if you already have the music, of course, just follow along with the lesson for free. But if you're interested, I do have a full edition of the entire suite uh, with, with all my fingerings and everything like that. So there's a link for that in the description. A very difficult work, um, quite advanced, and 
my first thing, the first thing I'll say is that in order to reach higher tempos and have a clean performance, um, cleaner than what I just did, actually, is I would recommend removing the notes that I've put in brackets. So in my edition, um, I've re put a number of notes in brackets um, throughout to make um, an optional edition of the piece that would be much easier. And when you look at other editions of this jig, it takes out a lot of notes and rewrites a lot of material. And uh, be because the original is quite impractical, um, I played all the original notes today. Um, there's a, one or two places where you have to literally rewrite the music to fit on the modern guitar. But um, I included all the notes today because I wanted to present a performance video with all of the notes. But to tell you the truth, it makes it abnormally difficult. Uh, makes just the chord shapes and everything that much harder. So if you want to bring the the tempo and the cleanliness of the playing up even higher, then I'd recommend that you take out the notes that I've put in brackets. I don't think there's too much of a sacrifice of taking the notes out. It doesn't affect the harmony too much. Everything's going by quite quickly. It's just some of the three note chords during fast sections. And then when I do a walkthrough, um, I'll talk about that a little bit. So in some ways, when you play this piece slowly, it's like, it's not too difficult. It's not, it's not outrageous, but you know, once the tempo starts getting up, it's like, it's like one giant, huge finger independence exercise. Lots of counterpoint going on, you know, two voices, sometimes three voices. Um, and just like all over the guitar with changing fingerings all the time. So it's it's almost a lesson in concentration. And um, I find that as I go through the piece, my technique degrades. Um, after even the first few bars, I start to get mentally tired and my technique starts to degrade. So what you'll need for this piece is a lot of slow practice and just working it in. It's a bit of a handful for my weekly lessons. If I really wanted to nail this one, you definitely have to memorize every single um, every single bar and just know it super well and just really like it, be able to anticipate every movement because it's so difficult. I don't have too much else to say. Um, you, you want a general eighth note feel, although you want a sense of four beats per bar in larger groupings. Um, but besides that, there's just a lot of um, counterpoint going on, so you could practice the voices independently. So if you're practicing the lower voice... And then you could practice the upper voice, of course. Practicing them separately will give you a little bit more definition in terms of the voice, the voicing and the counterpoint. And then when you go to play it in its entirety, you want to try, try, you know, that bass line. You want to try to have those voices independent. But of course, this is a super advanced piece, so if you're not um, aware of counterpoint yet, um, you, sh you should try some much, much easier pieces and work your way up to this one over a, a long period of time, because this one's pretty advanced. I don't have too much else to say. It's a, it's a very tricky piece, so let's just do a walkthrough and we'll talk about the sections as we go. Um, the opening, just make sure that's an offbeat, don't. You know, da di ya di ya ba. Make sure you know where the eighth note really lies. So here, I've eliminated the inner voice in brackets. I played it in when I performed it before. So the original is. Quite the handful. If you took out some of the inner voices, it'd be so much easier. I mean, just so it's so crazy. It, to add that extra voice is, makes it much more difficult. But it is nice. I like playing the original as well. But the, just to reach a fast tempo is just kind of impossible with all the notes. Um, it's, people do it. <laughs> you can see professional performances where, where people do it, but for the average human being. Um, it's 
hard to like get sustain. Make sure you're sustaining those upper voice. Lots of counterpoint through here. Nothing to talk about here, it's finger independence, but a little bit of a texture change here. This section um, had to be rewritten a little bit um, from the original. Every edition does rewrite it to some extent. Um, just because there's um, the upper voice and the lower voice um, on the modern guitar, they get crammed together quite a bit. You need a bigger ranged instrument like a keyboard to, to realize the original. So just a little bit of rewriting, but everyone pretty much does it in a similar way. section C natural I wish that there was one or two bars that didn't require special fingerings in this piece but it's not the case I just jumped down there first half, um, but not too much to say except for that very tricky bar two section. Second half, much more difficult. Um, there's a section at the end that almost demands that it be rewritten. I played it in its entirety today, but really when we get there around bar 17, um, it's, it's pretty wacky to, to not edit it. Okay, bar 11. <laughs> tough section there too. Um, squeeze the third finger in. Lots of moving lines within the similar chord shapes. So there's lots of like uh, gluey fingers, <laughs> best way I could describe it, uh, where they have to like bend and, and shift. It's, it's all irregular. It's not that it's that difficult, but it's, it's all irregular. So when you pick up the tempo, it's just, it's tricky there. Um, so from there, I made some sacrifices here, um, like here, I cut off the bass note with that C. Um, e, it depends on what tempo you're going, but um, there has to be some places in this piece that aren't difficult, and so rewriting it too much and adding you know, you have to find a compromise between something that's playable and something that's musical, so. Let those upper notes ring out. You could edit that as well, but I don't. Even put brackets in there just because it's at least it's in first position and it works um, fairly decently. Bar 15. Love this section. Hate this section, <laughs> technically speaking. There. You don't have to edit that part. You could if you if you're having a lot of difficulty, but I think you should keep that. Bar 17 is where it gets really wacky though. Uh, 
every edition edits this part. Um, to do this thing... Uh, to have two voices in 16th notes going like that is, is very, very difficult. Almost all editions reduce the bass voice to just 8th notes. Or some combination of 16th and 8th to make it easier. And I've put some of the notes in brackets, um, particularly ones that will not affect the harmony too much and just make it a lot rhythmic, more rhythmically easy. Um, especially in the beginning, too, of that bar, having that third inner voice makes like some of these stretches really difficult, which when you're going fast is so crazy. You know, there's so many big stretchy chords there. If you take out the inner voice, it's so much easier. And taking out some of the inner voices here would be so, is just a lot easier. So I do recommend it, but I wanted to play it today with all the notes in their entirety um, to to demonstrate what the uh, something as close to the original as possible. But there's a difference between practicing it at home and maybe um, doing some takes for a camera compared to performing it in person and under the pressure of a public performance, um, I would definitely edit those notes out. But nevertheless, uh, multiple editions edit this for good reason. So don't criticize the editors. It's for practicality reasons. of home free here. If it wasn't for a few sections in this piece, you could bring the tempo so much higher, and professionals do. Um, some they often will edit it a little bit compared to like the original, but um, at the highest level, people can pull it off for sure. Uh, it's a pretty big struggle for the average person. I find it very difficult, um, especially when adding all the notes in like I did today. But um, edit it. Um, it just it doesn't fit on the modern uh, classical guitar that well. It's it's much more suited to a keyboard or something with more strings maybe. That said, don't be afraid to just play it with a slower tempo. I, I tried to push the tempo a little bit today to, to just reach a middle ground between like the tempos that pros take and the amateur tempos. Um, and that's kind of where I, I sit anyway. But nevertheless, um, I really like it slower. It's, it's... That said, the, there's a couple sections in the piece that um, will will force that. So, um, when you encounter this piece, um, you're going to have to just treat it as a very long-term project. Don't get frustrated. Play it slowly. Perform it slowly if you need to. In the context of the entire suite, it wants to go quite fast. It's the final movements. It's the jig. It, it wants to get cooking. But that said, um, pretty tricky on the modern guitar. So... Um, it's a long-term project. Take it very slowly. Work it out. Um, feel free to edit some of those notes I have in brackets and then just enjoy yourself. It's actually, it's really fun to practice and it's excellent technique work um, to explore your own technique and to just dive into this difficult work that pros do play. Um, that said, there's, there's definitely easier works um, and ones more suited to the class modern classical guitar, such as the cello works and the violin works, right? The texture is just a little bit thinner. It's never this uh, quite as thick of counterpoint, so that makes it a little bit easier. But nevertheless, people love the, the so-called lute suites, um, but, you know, maybe their keyboard works, the Lutenwerk. But... It's, it is fun to play this work, and, it, and, it, and it, this one really reminds me of like the Brandenburg Concertos or something with all these lines coming in everywhere. So it's kind of an irresistible thing to, to tackle.